human beings are resultant beings. 5. There is no one who was born because he or she wanted to be born. No man or woman was born out of his or her own desire. We were born because of our parents, not because we desired to be born. The same is true for our parents, their parents, and all our ancestors. It is the same all the way back to Adam and Eve. Even the first human ancestors did not come to exist out of their own desire. Their existence sprang from the desire of someone before them. When we speak of human beings, we refer to men and women. Man needs woman and woman needs man. However, no man chose to be born as a man, nor did any woman choose to be born as a woman. We discover that we are a man or a woman after we are born, and after we grow up we recognize that we need each other and desire to become husband and wife. Knowing this, it is plain to see that human beings are not the fundamental cause, and that if there were no God, neither would there be human beings. 6. The vast human race came into existence through the process of men and women meeting each other and living together. Humanity is composed of numerous nations, the nations are composed of numerous tribes, the tribes are composed of numerous families and the families are composed of numerous individuals. Each of us is one of those individuals and a member of a family. The family and blood relationships that bind us were not forged according to our own wishes. God gives us our birth, our family and our relatives. Without God, relationships between teachers and students, or between parents and children, would not be possible. God is the cause and all of these relationships in the world are the result. 7. In order for anything on earth to exist, there has to be a cause. The world in which we live is a resultant world, the society and country in which we live and the environment we see around us are in a resultant position. There must be a motivation behind the existence of an environment of relationships. We cannot deny that. We can see that human beings are certainly behind the development of societies, nations, and the world. However, human beings cannot be the fundamental cause of human beings. We are undeniably in the position of resultant beings, behind whose creation there must be a motivation, a purpose and a reason. 8. We have to unite mind and body with God at the center. When mind and body unite with God completely, they form a trinity. The reason we need to become one in mind and body centered on God is because God is our cause. God and human beings relate as cause and effect. The mind and body have a reciprocal relationship, this is a basic principle of the universe. Unity between cause and effect, and between subject and object partners, is a fundamental and universal principle. Unless there is oneness between God and humankind as cause and effect, between this subject partner and object partner, there cannot be an ideal environment, nor can we become ideal beings. 9. Human beings are by no means causal beings. We are resultant beings brought about for some reason. There is no way for a result to come about without any relationship with its cause. No matter how tortuous its course, the result needs to relate to and fit with the cause. Human beings are the way they are. Because they resemble some causal being. If we say that this causal being is God, we can draw the conclusion that human beings resemble God. 10. God is the causal being of the universe. He is the causal being behind all action, the causal being who exerts force the causal being who gives direction, and the causal being who endows purpose. We call him a god of personality because he always acts with a clear motive, a sense of direction, and a purpose. Therefore, everything in the world advances in the direction of the purpose that is based on the cause. This is what we mean when we say that God is the being that causes everything.